Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. The very nature of betrayal means that someone we trusted in deceived us, even tricked us. And if you've been betrayed, you know how painful it is. Someone has used your trust, a place where you were vulnerable, and used it to hurt you. Uh, used it when your guard was down and did it knowing that it would cause you pain but did it for their own benefit. The pain of betrayal is partly because it comes from a place we didn't expect and we, we didn't see it coming. It is a knife in the back. But that's not the worst part of betrayal. The worst part is the realization that someone you love, someone that you care about, someone that you thought cared about you, they would cause you to suffer for their own advantage. Jesus knew the pain of betrayal, but not because he didn't see it coming. He suffered the pain of being betrayed by someone, but without any of the shock or surprise. In fact, Jesus turns betrayal upside down. He planned to be betrayed for the good of those that turned against him. He intentionally became close to people, shared his life with them, choosing them intentionally as his companions, knowing that many would abandon him and one of them would literally sell him out. And when we claim that we are loyal to Jesus, that we are his followers, but then we treasure the things of this world more than him, we are his betrayers. But we have a God who is both sovereign and and benevolent, even in our betrayal. He is sovereign over evil, so nothing happens that ever surprises him. In fact, he uses and controls all evil actions for his purposes, and he is benevolent. He wants good for us so that he causes all evil, even betrayal, to work for the good of those who love him. He sent his son with a plan to be betrayed so he could rescue those who put their faith in him.